A very warm welcome to the SWAM course on design thinking and uh, innovation. Uh, this is week 4. Uh, in this section, we will continue with secondary research. So, it is section A4, week 4. Let us begin by a quote. Uh, this is by uh, Rabindranath Tagore. The quote says, it is very simple to be happy, but it is very difficult to be simple. Again, a very profound quote that makes you think, it is simple to be happy, difficult to be simple. Yeah, and simplicity, making it simple, easy for people is something that we are trying to solve using the design thinking process. So, in that sense, this quote is very, very important and pertinent to the subject that we are trying to understand. So, let us look at the week 4. We continue with secondary research and trying to understand users. We will also make an interesting tool where we put users on a matrix and map them out okay, uh, according to their importance or priority. And then we do secondary research and use these mappings in your project. And we also look at a case study. This is a product design case study that is week 4. So, we continue with the secondary research, it is part 2. So, we ask again, which phase of the design thinking process is secondary research part 2? How do we understand users? How do we understand the environment of the users or the environment where the product is uh, you know situated? And then with further study and references. So, we are continuing with the secondary research. So, we know that the secondary research is actually the first phase of the design thinking and innovation process. Uh, it has to do with you know understanding the subject and secondary research means uh, information or knowledge which is already existing. So, it helps you identify the needs and locate issues to be solved through documentation and research, which of course, is followed by analysis, ideation, building, testing and implementing it. So, in a nutshell, it is research, analysis, ideation, build and do, testing and implementation. So, let us ask the first question, how do we actually understand the users? So, for your topic that you have chosen, okay, you can look at the backgrounds, uh, their level of participation or involvement, you know they are they directly con connected with your topic or they are indirectly connected with your topic, how important is your topic, uh, what is the level of expertise? their interest and activities. So, backgrounds are important, right? So, you can look at you know what age group they belong to, what gender, what languages they speak, you know income levels, where are they located, what are their interests, what are their educational backgrounds, skill levels, profession, etcetera. Okay? So, this is basically getting the background of your users. Then you can also locate users based on their level of participation. Okay. So, you can have users who are primary users. Okay. That means, they are very, very important. Like if you are doing designing a toy for children, children become the primary users of this toy. Okay. The parents and siblings will play with them. Okay. So, they become the secondary users. 
for example, the salesman who sells the toy will probably become the third or the fourth user, right, of this. So, the level of participation makes them into primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary users. Uh, here, for example, uh, users for hospital services are classified according to the levels of participation. So, the primary users are the patients, doctor and nurse. Secondary users are the ones who come as visitors, maybe the hospitals, staff, you know, ambulance staff, technical staff. Uh, tertiary users could be the security people, the maintenance people, the catering staff. And quaternary users could be the medicine suppliers or vendors, the taxi you need to catch or the auto services which uh, are next to the hospital, right. So, you can classify these according to the level of participation. How do we identify users based on their expertise? There are various ways, okay. Uh, this expertise could be while you are using a product or a service or a facility. Uh, if you become familiar, you become more adapted using it. Okay, so, in terms of expertise, you could be a novice user, it is the first time user. I use it only once in a while, you know. Uh, sometimes I can become very expert at using it, you know, it is like the keyboard, okay. If you are using it for the first time, like a novice user. Maybe I need to use my computer once in a while, then I am an interpretant user, okay. If I am very good at, you know, using the computer, I become an expert user, okay. And some people even become super expert users, you know, they do not even have to think how they use it, okay. So, expert is, is something that you need to look at, yeah. Uh, you can take the classic instance of uh, learning to ride a bicycle, okay. Before you touch a bicycle, you are like a novice user, uh, then you get to ride once in a while, it is intermittent user, then you get to know how to ride the bicycle, you can become an expert user and if you can ride the bicycle with one wheels, you become a super expert user, right. Yeah, so that is the level of expertise. You can also classify, uh, you know, based on the frequency, some are casual users, occasional users core users, they need it all the time and power users, they need it almost all the time, okay. Yeah, they are dependent on this object or this. like if you are a taxi driver, uh, you need the car, you are a core user and if you are in the taxi all the time, you become actually a power user, right. Yeah, and also depends on the learning ability. Some are unwilling to learn a new skill, uh, how to operate something. Okay, some adopt their in between, some are conformist, okay, and some are willing to learn, okay. So, these are the different levels of expertise and users do not fall into one category, but they fall into many of these categories, okay. And while designing uh, an object or a service, this is actually quite important to you. So, you can also base it on their interest and in activities, yeah, they could be interested in, you know, uh, many of these things, arts theatre, dance, music, entertainment, sports, games, events, adventure, travel, uh, they are interested in science, business, design, farming, socialising, so on and so forth, spirituality, social work, animal care, etc. It is important to know what their interests are because many times based on the interest, they also do that particular activity. So, let us look at the user and their environment, right. So, how do we identify users based on their environment, okay. We can look at it from three points of view, one is the spatial environment, the product or the artifact environment and the communication environment, okay. So, if you look at spatially, uh, there are some things which are personal to you, okay, they become private to you, right. Uh, then you have a social space where you socialize with people, then you have the work space and you have the public space. In fact, your behavior kind of differs in each of these spaces, okay. Uh, you have the private space and you have the home space and the office space, uh, even space can be divided according to whether it is urban or rural or semi-urban or semi-rural, right. 
Uh, you can do it according to the artifacts. It's a personal artifacts. It's a shareable one. It's a public artifact. Okay. So the the way it happens, the design happens is a bit different. Like you get a lot of variety in personal artifacts. Okay, social artifacts be, tend to be uh, not so expressive, and the public art artifacts actually become very subtle at uh, being designed because they are being used by many people. Okay, communication environment is also something that one needs to look at. Okay, you can use icons or images for communication, uh, written language or spoken language for communication. Gestures are important. Uh, medias become important. Further, you can also look at it from a cognitive environment. That means it has got to do a lot with thinking, the learning, uh, organizing. You know, how do I remember things? How do I analyze? Okay, so this is the cognitive environment. Uh, there is also the sensory environment which you can feel, touch and feel. Okay, so you experience it. Uh, it can be used for stimulation. Yeah, so, so that is the sensory part of it which you sense the environment. Okay, and there is the social environment where you share, families become important, societies become important, public become important, life becomes important. So, that is the social environment. Now, let us look at how do we identify users. Okay, so, these are the steps involved. Okay, list all the users connected with your problem area or topic. You can regroup them according to the level of participation. That means, uh, those are primary to quaternary. Uh, you can understand the background, expertise, interest and activities in relation to your topic. Okay. So, that means that once you have this, you are actually ready to go ahead with the next section, which is the primary research. Let us look at further studies and references. The dsource.in is a very important reference uh, and especially dsource.in slash DTI which gives you a lot of information with respect to the design thinking and innovation course that we are doing. Uh, you can also look at research design qualitative, quantitative and mixed methods by John Creswell and David Creswell, uh, very good book. Uh, so is the book Design Research Methods and Perspectives by Brenda Laurel and Peter Lunenfield. Uh, Okay, so, these are some of the references. If you can get your hands on them, please go ahead and refer to these. I am ending with a design quote uh, by a very famous designer, Charles Eames. He was also invited, you know, just after independence to come and have a look at India. And he came out with this wonderful uh, report called as the India Report. Uh, and uh, yeah, he really liked the uh, the aesthetics and the level of craftsmanship, which was there in our country, and uh, he encouraged uh, us to actually take it forward. And uh, he's an iconic designer. Uh, you still get his chairs called as the Eames chairs. Okay, so this is his quote: "Recognizing the need is the primary condition for design." Okay, so need finding is extremely important for a design to happen. Uh, if you can actually find the need, you actually almost found the solution. You see, because the lead actually leads to a probable solution. So, thanks a lot for listening. Uh, this was section A4, week 4. Let us summarize. We have just looked at uh, what else can you do with secondary research and in the sense trying to understand the users. Uh, the next section is the tool on trying to map users as participants and then on to applying it and then uh, with a case study.